Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter also. And click the link, get your free AI resource. The resource is free. Everything inside of the resource is free. There's no cost and you'll learn a lot about AI, much more than we can do in these short segments. So also check out my book on Amazon, The Beginner's Guide to AI. It's super fast read, two to three hours for the whole book. And I, I think you'll like it. It's history of AI and current impact on 10 industries. So thanks a lot for tuning in. And today is robots, robots, robots. So there's a couple of robot updates uh, this week. And the first is that uh, there's a conference called Automatica. And the last time they had it was four years ago because of COVID. Well, they just had it again. So it's the first in-person global conference on robots in four years. And it was really interesting what they said. They said, you know, four years isn't so long, but in the world of robots right now, it's been a long, long time. Um, so what was hottest at this show? Well, the hottest thing was palletizing and logistics. This is a subject we've talked about a lot. You do not want to be a warehouse worker five years from now. One trend that was exceptionally clear was that palletizing, packaging, shipping, and other logistics are in high demand right now for robots. And these robots are AI-driven, by the way. That's why we're talking about it. We saw many different logistics-focused solutions at Automatica. And our robotic booth, so that's a company called Robotic, which is R-O-B-O-T-I-Q, attendees showed a lot of interest in these uh, palletizing solutions. Logistics has been a core focus in most industries recently, especially following the supply chain disruptions associated with COVID. These disruptions have highlighted the importance of automation and logistics applications, and I'm extending that to package delivery, as we've discussed. Many companies are seeing logistics as their first key area for automating with robots. Again, AI-driven robots. Cobots, we also saw cobots moving into areas that are not classic cobot tasks. For example, welding. Uh, so cobots are, for example, a robot that will help load a piece of manufacturing equipment while the human operator is there with the robot and starts up the machine and sets it up and makes it run, but the robot loads the product to go through the machine. Uh, so that's a perfect example of a cobot, but now cobots are moving into welding. Uh, this year, we saw several companies focus offering, um, offering welding applications. These capitalize on the easy programming of cobots, allowing welding operators to intuitively create programs for the welding robots, because they still have to be programmed, right? They're not self-learning, these cobots. Uh, but one of the biggest things is mobile robots. At this year's Automatica, there were perhaps more mobile robots on the show floor than ever before. And these robots were not confined to booths. Many of them were milling around the show floor, interacting with attendees, providing a mobile way for exhibitors to extend their reach. We saw drink-serving mobile robots, as well as one robot that came to find you and then spoke with you. So we've talked about this a lot, how a robot for your home that will go around and do cleaning or load and unload the dishwasher uh, or do pots and pans. Uh, these are very, very close now. And the fact that they're willing to allow robots to wander around a massive show floor with thousands of participants there says they've reached a critical point of using AI 
uh, to navigate safely and effectively, even in crowded environments, uh, which many homes qualify as uh, crowded by, by things, not people, but still crowded. Um, then there was a second article about a robot dog uh, that programmed itself to walk. So check this out. Uh, the robot dog started by waving its legs in the air like an exasperated beetle. After 10 minutes of struggling, it managed to roll over on its front. Half an hour in, the robot is taking its first clumsy steps like a newborn cow. Uh, but after one hour, the robot is strutting around the lab with confidence. What makes this four-legged robot special is that it learned to do this all by itself without being shown what to do in a computer simulation. And this was at Cal Berkeley in California. They used an AI technique called reinforcement learning, which trains algorithms by rewarding them for desired actions to train the robot to walk from scratch in the real world. And they trained three other robots, one to pick up balls and move them from one tray to another, and etc. So what does that mean? Well, this is major, right? This is major because a robot had to be trained in advance to do one very specific function before it was usable. Now, with this breakthrough, robots will be able to start training themselves to do different tasks. And this is what will make robots broadly applicable in the broad world, meaning job displacement. Click the link below, get your free AI resource. Learn more about AI. You will have to work with AI within a couple of years, and you need to be prepared to get into a career that will not be automated so easily, like working in a warehouse, loading and unloading pallets, uh, putting the pallet on the truck, uh, or driving, as we shall see in the, by 2025. So also get my book on Amazon, The Beginner's Guide to AI. It's really a really fast, easy read. And thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Be prepared.